This is the beginning of the review for test three. Section 3.1 was all about parabolas. So we need to name all of this information for this parabola, which is in standard form. You should be able to name this stuff just looking at the parabola. The vertex will be 4, 1. We change the sign on what's inside the parentheses. Do not change the sign outside the parentheses. The axis of symmetry comes directly from the vertex. The axis of symmetry is a vertical line, and you must write x equals 4. The y-intercept is where this curve crosses the y-axis. Now, you do have the option of typing this in your calculator and looking on the graph, but there's a possibility that you can't tell the y-intercept from the graph. So the y-intercept of any graph means we're looking for the point that's on the y-axis. Any point that's on the y-axis has an x value of 0. So all we have to do is plug 0 in for this x and do the arithmetic. You can type this into your calculator if you need to, but 0 minus 4 is negative 4, squared is 16, but there's a negative in front of that, plus 1, negative 16 plus 1 is negative 15. How does this open? Because this is a negative in front, it opens down. But that is something that you could check when you look at the calculator graph. The domain of a parabola is always the infinities. The range of the parabola you can get one of two ways. One is to look at your graph and see what it looks like. We know it's, it's down, so it's just something like this. Is it exactly in that position? I don't know, but I do know it's facing down. The range refers to the y values. From bottom to top, it's coming in from negative infinity, and it goes as high as the y part of your vertex. Your vertex was 1, so it's negative infinity 1. Oops, with a square bracket. Same problem, same kind of problem, but this one is not in standard form. You're going to have to find the vertex by using the formula negative b over 2a to start with. So this is a, which is 1, b is 8, c is negative 12, not that that matters. So this is negative 8 over 2 times 1, which is negative 8 over 2, which is negative 4. So we know the x part of the vertex is negative 4. You have the possibility that when you type this into the calculator graph, that the vertex is staring you in the face, but it could be off the graph a little bit, or the pixels could be strange, so you need to know how to do this with the formula. So the vertex, the x part of the vertex is negative 4. To find the y part of the vertex, just stuff negative 4 in for x. So this is negative 4 squared plus 8 times negative 4 minus 12. Of course, I'm writing this out by hand. You could use the stow button on your calculator, do negative 4, stow is x, and then type in x squared plus 8x minus 12, either by hand or with the calculator. This is 16 minus 32 minus 12, which gives me negative 28 for the y part of the vertex. Axis of symmetry, x equals the x part of the vertex. That's easy. The y-intercept, if you plug 0 in for this x and for this x, that all goes away, and the y-intercept is just negative 12. It opens up because this original equation had a positive x squared, and the domain for a parabola is always the infinities. The range, if you just look at this, we've got a parabola that faces up. The vertex is you know, way down here, but it faces up. So the vertex happens to be the lowest point, so that is negative 28 with a bracket, comma, infinity. We want to write an equation in standard form of the parabola. It has the same shape as this. Now, standard form is y equals a times x minus h squared plus k where h and k are your vertex. So we're going to plug negative 3 in for that h and 5 in for that k. So right now, it looks like this. x minus a negative 3 makes x plus 3. Put the 5 in for k. Then we have to talk about this a. Well, the a is this number that is in front of the x squared, so our coefficient is a. And it's y equals, or you could use the f of x notation if you'd rather. The next one asks us to determine whether the given quadratic function has a minimum or maximum. If this is negative, we know that the parabola is upside down, which means the vertex here is a maximum. Anytime they talk about minimum and maximum, they are talking about the vertex. 
So we know that this has to have a maximum, that's half the question, and it wants to know where that happens. The maximum occurs at the vertex. This equation is not in standard form, so we're going to have to use negative b over 2a to get started. So this is negative 12 over 2 times negative 2. Negative 12 over negative 4 is a positive 3. So our vertex is 3 comma something. And to find out what that something is, I'm going to plug 3 in for each of those x's and do the arithmetic either by hand or with the calculator. So this is negative 2 times 3 squared plus 12 times 3 minus 8. 3 squared is 9 times negative 2 is negative 18 plus 36 minus 8 is 10. So the maximum occurs at the vertex 3 comma 10. This is number 5 repeated, so we'll just skip that. 6 says a ball is thrown upward and outward from a height of 5 feet. Upward and outward means it's traveling something like this. What does the ball do? Once it reaches a peak, eventually it's got to come back down. And what does that look like? It's a parabola. So this is just another parabola function problem. It says the height of the ball, the height of the ball, which is this, can be modeled with this equation. The height of the ball is also the vertex of your parabola. So what is this asking me to find? It's asking me to find the vertex of this function right here. The vertex is negative b over 2a, which is negative 2.7 over 2 times negative 0.5, which is negative 2.7 over negative 1. That's what that arithmetic works out to be. So negative 2.7 over negative 1 is actually a positive 2.7. So the x part of my vertex is 2.7. I'm not going to write out this arithmetic. I'm going to let you put this in the calculator. But to find the y value, I'm going to plug 2.7 in for x. I would use the calculator. I would do 2.7 stow as x, and then type in negative 0.5x squared plus 2.7x plus 5, and it works out to be 8.6. So that is the vertex of that parabola. Now we have to really answer these questions. What is the maximum height of the ball? The height is your y value. The height is 8.6 feet. That is the first question, 8.6 feet. And how far from where it was thrown does this occur? Well, it was thrown from here. How far refers to the horizontal distance, which is the x value. So it reaches a height of 8.6 feet at a distance of 2.7 feet horizontally. Number seven asks us to find the zeros of the polynomial function and give the multiplicity. When, I'm going to skip seven for a second and go to number eight because your zeros are staring you in the face. If the function is already factored, as this one is, then your zeros are what you would get if you set each one of these equal to zero. We don't need to write that down. If I set this equal to zero, I get a zero or a solution of positive two. This one would give me a zero or solution of negative three and this gives me a solution, or zero, of negative five. Now, in respect of order here, the multiplicity, if you look at two, this one, the power on this parentheses is one, so its multiplicity is one, but what they're really asking for is that that is an odd number. This multiplicity is two because the power is two. That is an even number. And over here on x plus five, the power on that parentheses is one, so that is also odd. And those tell us if this curve will touch or cross the graph. If you have an odd multiplicity, it is going to cross. If you have an even multiplicity, it, touch and, it touches and turns around. I call that a bounce. So in order here, the first one crosses, the second one touches and turns around, and the third one crosses. So that's what happens when it's already factored. These two here, number seven and nine, we have to do the factoring to come up with those zeros. So let's solve this. And when you are asked to find the zeros, it's as if that function is equal to zero. And we solve. When you have four terms, you're going to have to factor by grouping. So this is x squared times x plus three minus four times x plus three. Those two are matching, which means I can continue with my grouping 
So that's x plus 3 times x squared minus 4. I'm not finished factoring. x plus 3, x plus 2, x minus 2, which gives me these zeros, negative 3, negative 2, 2. And each of these has a power of 1, which means all of these have odd multiplicity, which means all of these will be where the curve crosses the axis. And this last one, x cubed plus 6x squared plus 9x equal to 0. I can factor out a GCF of x. Gives me x squared plus 6x plus 9. That factors as x plus 3 times x plus 3. And for the purposes of this multiplicity idea, I'm going to write x plus 3 times x plus 3 as x plus 3 squared. Now look at this. If you set each of those equal to 0, you would get a 0 of 0 for this and negative 3 for this. The power on this x is 1, therefore this is odd. Power on this is 2, therefore this is even. And what that means is at 0, the curve crosses the axis. And at negative 3, it touches and turns around or bounces. Keep in mind with these problems, you are not allowed to use your graphing calculator. So you must know the odd and even relationship. You can't rely on looking at the graph on your calculator.